Welcome to the Bounce Back to Breakthrough podcast. I'm Ross Rolfe, your host and international breakup divorce coach. Brace yourself for gripping real stories from guests who were shattered by heartbreak, but found the power to rebuild. Uncover their insights and strategies for transformation in your own life. From the depths of despair to triumphant breakthroughs, join me on this remarkable journey of healing and growth. Welcome to another episode of the Bounce Back to Breakthrough podcast. I'm your host, Ross Rolfe, and I'm here to guide you on this journey. This week, I have Alex Watts. Now, Alex is going to tell you lots and lots of things that he's gone through in his life, which is a mental health breakdown after being diagnosed with chronic back pain in 2016. He's going to go through kind of how that happened and how that kind of led to his gradual downfall. But then the most important thing is how he turned that around. So as you know, these stories sometimes can be a little bit triggering for people. Okay, so just to warn you in advance, but the point of this is, is that it gives you really good insights to take away. And everyone I speak to on this show are normal people. They're not celebrities. So they're real people like you and me. They're telling their raw, real stories so that you can really gain from it. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you all to Alex Watts. Yeah. Hey, Ross. Great to be here, mate. And first of all, yeah, dates absolutely bang on. And yeah, just great to be on the podcast, to be honest, to be telling my story and hopefully, hopefully it can add some value to people's lives. Obviously, when I, when I tell it, tell it in more depth, but yeah, um, great I'm to be lo- here, mate. Thanks for coming on, mate. I'm looking forward to hearing about how it's happened as well, because I noticed you said a football injury. So in my head, mm. I've got you as this kind of, not not quite Lionel Messi, but I'm, I'm thinking <laughs> you must have been a de- half decent footballer yeah. or something. Am I right? <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, I, I will, I'll openly tell everyone, no, I was not Lionel Messi. <laughs> but no, I was all, I was all right. That's for sure. That's the best way to the best way I describe it. But but yeah, absolutely, mate. And sometimes doing what we love, like playing football and stuff, can it can lead to something like this. But yeah, that's where the injury happened for me, and it, it was what we now twenty twenty four. So it was eight years ago that it all started. So so yeah. Cool. So it's it's going to be a bit of a journey for everyone. I know there's going to be a little bit of talk in there about obviously the mental health impacts. There's going to be a bit about when it was spiraling to do with getting into fights and trouble. You've also mentioned about there was there's some therapy, physical and both mental therapy. So I, I think, you know, to give the listeners just a, a little snippet there, that there's going to be plenty in here that is going to help you guys. So let's hear your story, Alex. Absolutely, mate. Yeah. So, I mean, the actual injury took place in was 2015. So it was it was I damaged two discs in my back. And if anyone knows what that feels like, they'll they'll know it's not the nicest one to have. So yeah, and what what basically happened, Ross, was that I didn't realize it so much at the time. And and being at the age I was, about 18, 19 years old, I was just so keen to do the things I enjoyed in life, play football, you know, basically every day if I could. And I, I was never wanting to go to the doctor or to get advice for things like this. So I just carried on playing when I could, even with the injury. And, and it, it was, it didn't really go away, to be honest with you. It stayed with me for quite some time. Uh, and then I joined uni that year. And in my first year of uni, the pain would come back. It would go away. It would come back and go away. And about a year went by and it just all of a sudden just came back all at once. Um, and I assumed that I'd done the injury again. That I'd done the same damage that I had before. So, yeah, I went back to the doctor and they told me that, no, you haven't like redone the, the injury almost. Not quite sure why you're reporting the kind of pain that you're reporting. So I went back again, back to uni. Wasn't really playing much football at this point. Wasn't really doing much sport. I was in the gym a little bit, but couldn't do too much because of the because of the pain, really. So, I, yeah, we ended up going back to the doctor again, and they basically said that it's long-lasting damage. There's a degeneration between the discs in your back, and for anyone who might know what, what that is, basically it's just permanent kind of pain in that area. So they said, yeah, so basically it's chronic pain in your back as a result of, a, of the previous injury. And, yeah, at the time, we're, we're now in 2016, and that's that's when I was told I had it, and it absolutely hit me for six, to be honest, Ross, because I was 21 now. I was kind of supposed to be in the most enjoyable years of my life at uni. Um, and yeah, it just it just completely took me back. I never really had to face a challenge before. 
you know, certainly not on this scale. I, I had quite a good upbringing. I didn't, you know, have too many things go wrong at school or anything like that. So it was the first time I'd really faced proper adversity, you know, for, for me only. And I didn't really know how to deal with that, to be honest with you. I didn't have a clue. I just kind of made the assumption that I couldn't and that life was unfair, that this had happened to me. And that's all it was. So for a long time, I, I was also told as well that it could only be managed and never cured. So this was going to be forever in my head. You know, it was it was going to be something I'd have to deal with for the rest of my life from the age of 2021 20, onwards. And that that was just a bit too, I guess, for me at the time, a bit too much for me to handle. And yeah, I, I chose I chose not to manage it, I suppose. I I looked at the situation as if life, like I said before, is so unfair on me and this is happening and I'm going to be in pain all the time. I'm not going to be able to enjoy my life. I'm not going to be able to build positive relationships. I'm going to view myself as lesser than everybody else. And that's the way I chose to look at it at the time. And that's the type of mindset that I had at that point. So yeah, things got progressively worse. I failed to manage it. The pain would get worse. I would rely on the medication I needed to take. I would end up being quite a, that's how, how shall I put it, unpleasant person to be around at the best of times. As time went on, I would fall out with a lot of my friends at uni. I would get into fights as well because the only escape for me at the time was drinking. So I would go out and as you do at uni anyway, like everyone loves to have a great time. Everyone loves to go to the club and everything. And that's, that's, but that's all I kind of did, to be honest with you. I didn't go to my lectures or anything during this time. I wouldn't attend uni. Would just about make my deadlines. I even got a few moved just because I just didn't do my work, my uni work. And yeah, so it would just be a case of drinking and that'd be the only escape. But of course, when you do that and you know that's your only escape, it leads to things negative situations with people where you do end up in fights you do I did have to end up talking to the police on more than one occasion just to kind of explain some actions that were taken and even at this point it was still kind of hard to see what was going on it was still still very raw for me what was happening and I kind of just wanted to blame the whole world for what had happened to me as if my life was so tragic and that's the way I felt it was and yeah, it just led to mental health struggles, like you, you alluded to earlier. Uh, the physical element of it really was was the cause of that, definitely. And also just the way I reacted to it. So yeah, as time went on and things kind of got worse and I upset more and more people, I I was just intent on not doing things in a way, in a respectful way, I just was, a, like I said before, just not the most pleasant person to be around. And it took a lot of those things to realize that actually this isn't an excuse. Like this is not me. This is not how I should be living my life. And it, mm. it took a lot of mistakes and it took a lot of things to get wrong to realize that. And, and how I always describe to people, I was... I was sat in my uni room in my uni house and I had these red curtains and I mean, they were terrible curtains, by the way, I'm sure an interior designer <laughs> would have an absolute field day with it, but <laughs> I don't know why I had them up, but I, that's probably part of it. I was looking at them and just thinking to myself, surely there's more than this, you know, being in pain all day. I mean, I'm spending most of my days that I'm not out drinking, lying in bed, you know, doing nothing the whole time. But surely there's more to life than this, even though I've been hit by something that I deem as really negative and really life-changing, which it kind of is as well, but I saw it in a negative way. And surely there's more. Surely there's more to life. Surely there's more to my life, you know? And of course there is now we see that there is so much more and there's so much more that can come of it. So I ended up talking to a mentor I had at the uni at the time and she was amazing. She was perfect person to, to help coach me through it. And just to have a different perspective, just to have her perspective on, on what was going on in, with my life, because I'd never had anyone else's perspective, really. All I ever had was the facts and the figures and everything. So just to get that was a massive life-changing moment. And 
I think the realization, the biggest realization I had, Ross, was I had a poor mindset. My mindset was not good. And that it, it wasn't the physical condition, the chronic pain that was the problem. It wasn't the mental health that was the problem. The problem was me. It's my mindset. You know, it's the way I looked at it for so long. And that's what caused me to take all the actions and all the upset and all the, the problems. It was my mindset. And that's the thing that needed to change, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, go, we'll go a bit more into the mindset stuff towards the end for listeners because I think they love they love all that. But hopefully you were kind of, if you were listening to that, you did realize that is the way that was that was going to go because... I don't know if you've ever if you've ever read or heard any stuff by Dr. Joe Dispenza. Have you you ever heard of him? Possibly. Possibly. Um, I bet it was like yeah. Def- definitely, definitely check out some of his stuff. Yeah. It I it was just your your with what's happened to you. I was just thinking then it's quite it's quite similar to him, but he had a really bad mm. accident. And basically he was told to never walk again, this, that, and the other. But he was basically like, Yeah, I will. And you know, like he has basically nothing wrong with him. And he, and he puts it all down to your mindset, like it. And it's basically if people are telling you, like you could, you know, you'll never walk again, and you just accept that you will never walk again. Whereas if you're like, no, I will, and you're really determined, you believe it, and you actually put steps in place to start making it so you can walk again, you can do it. And he he he's obviously, as I say, he's a doctor, but he go he goes into like real real detail about how basically your body can heal itself and create any chemicals you need to get through things. But most of the time we just never use that because of all the negative things we tell ourselves. Really, really knowledgeable, insightful guy. So that's another one for listeners to um, listen to. If you've never listened to his stuff, he is literally mega world famous. Yeah. Re- really interesting. Cause it's, it's quite similar to you in, in that respect. So when, I mean, I don't think I've ever had this go my back. I've had various little niggly back things, but I've never had this kind of, constant one that's basically just dragging you down constantly isn't it when you're at 18 19 it's like the world should be your oyster really isn't it because you're you know you're just kind of becoming a man as it were and you know you start in uni and then all of a sudden you're not able to quite do the same as everyone else exactly mate and that's what was going around in my head the whole time mm. it was i was looking at everyone else and i was just kind of i mean everyone struggles with something you know, every day they, they say, don't they? Everyone's fighting a battle that you don't understand or see. And it's, it's so true to an extent, but I guess I wasn't looking at it like that. I was looking at everybody else as if there's, everyone's having this perfect life and I'm having this terrible life and there's no in between. There's no opportunity for me to be any different. And that's, yeah, that it's, it's funny how it's, you know, people will think it's just the pain that's causing it. And, and it was in a sense, but again, going back to what you said with that belief, you know, it, it was the belief of that. And it is true that what you believe is what you have and what you achieve. You yeah. know, and it's it's so fascinating that. Yeah. There was there was another little bit in there when when you were talking about when they were saying about your your back and that. Did they at any point have they said, Oh, you should have come and seen us earlier? I mean, they, they didn't say I should have done it. They they were just alluding to if I had done it. Mm. You know. What what I were think you thinking that... to yourself about that though? Oh, I like knew it. I, I knew I knew that I didn't like going to the doctor and I knew that, which I think a lot of people can resonate with, but sometimes you've really got to put yourself first. And I knew that I, the way I, it was, I knew deep down without actually admitting it to myself or admitting to anyone else. It was, it was my decisions that led me to where I was. And that's quite a dark thought for people to have. And it's quite a difficult one to actually own up to and own, you know, in general. So I think that, yeah, I mean, they, they, I knew that they thought that, Mm. you know, and, and I knew the deep down that I knew that as well, but I don't think anyone had to say, say it, if you know Mm. what I mean. I think it was a lesson that I, I kind of need, it's it's one I I suppose I taught myself. Yeah. It's it's quite well, no, well, it's quite well documented with men, isn't it? That we basically leave things too late and then when we eventually go and get looked you know you you look at like prostate cancer for example how many people that kills and basically it's like what what's quite well known with men is we just leave everything to you know until it's really really bad and you have to go as opposed to i should have this looked at and 
yeah it was interesting with what you're saying then because I, I was trying to put myself kind of in your shoes and I was thinking like I was thinking right I could if I go back into my mindset as I would have been at that age I would have literally been absolutely blaming myself rotten like literally like if you would have just gone and got it done this wouldn't have happened and you'd be a normal 18 year old and now you better do all this stuff it's your own fault and you know that was the kind of voice I had in my head at that kind of age very very self-critical self-blame and self-sabotage and everything so that yeah I can pick I can pitch that must have been really really difficult when you're trying to you know you're in that kind of best bit of your life well what should be the best bit of your life there was another bit on here that so I was making notes as you were saying about it when they were saying like it, you know, when you're told it's something that's always going to be there, what what was like your yourself talk about that? Literally, what I think you just said about how you would see it, Ross. I think it was it was simply a case of wow, like this is forever. Because it, I guess at that age, you kind of feel like life is forever anyway. Mm. Part of this, we kind of a lot of the time we mistake as if our current moment will always be lasting, but. At that point, it just felt like I was just telling myself a lifetime of being in pain, a lifetime of pain from this age, not from 30 years time or whatever, from now. And there's nothing I can do, even though they're telling me there are ways around to manage this. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, I suppose they're not there to go through it in full detail of me and say, oh, it's a mindset shift and all of this stuff. They probably may not even know that themselves. So to me, it was a, it was just no way around it i wasn't hearing it could be managed i was just hearing that i'm gonna have to deal with this and that's it like line drawn under it so yeah i I think you've hit on a really good point there actually because it's like even if even if they did know about mindset and the like the Mm. power of the mind that like realistically there's a it's a very very small percentage of the population that have like a growth mindset and that are open mm. to trying, you know, wanting to try different things and trying to actually improve their mindset to improve their life. So would would like NHS, for example, are they going to go around saying to everyone, oh, yeah, well, if you, you change your mindset on it? Like, probably not, because people like to complain about everything and the people generally seem to want, you know, want some tablets to treat symptoms instead of dealing with causes of stuff. So I, I can foresee if, if they... I mean, they might give out leaflets on it, you know, someone comment on here or tell me if I'm wrong, but I can, I can strongly foresee, like, even if, even if they had loads of stuff they could tell you, they might give you one point or something about mindset because ultimately most people aren't going to be fully receptive of it. And then with that, you then have the problem of basically you're just living by what you're told you've got. And the, the other issue around that is often when people have an issue, they don't they basically say, oh, yeah, I've tried everything. No, you haven't. Like mm. I like anyone on here who's had any issue with anything, it doesn't have to just be like a back pain or whatever, right? And when people say they've tried everything, no, you haven't. Like literally, no, you haven't. Like you, there could, would have been other things you could try. It's just what often happens is once you try a few things and they don't work, we get into that mindset of like nothing's going to work, is it? Like, I've tried everything, but there's always something else. It might be a slight tweak. It might be doing it more, less, different times, you know, like there's, there's so many combinations, but I can see how when you, you know, it's like when you have that failure thing or you're feeling a bit defeated about it, you're already in that poor mindset. So you're not just going to be like, I'll keep going, I'll keep going because you already feel like you're at the, you know, the bottom of the mountain. Yeah, it, it would have been tough. I can, I can certainly, I can certainly see that from what, what you're saying, Alex without a shadow of a doubt there there was another little bit in there where you mentioned I I was basically going to ask about support network and you mentioned about a mentor how did that how did that come about yeah I mean she was my well she was kind of my lecturer or tutor through the whole three years really so I I, I had already kind of built up a half decent relationship with her and what I didn't mention before is the reason why I could resonate with her so well Um, sadly she's no longer with us but she was struggling with Parkinson's she had Parkinson's disease Mm -hmm. and I I know it's very different and I know ultimately in the end and and it did that was gonna she was gonna pass away with that so I think she could I could kind of understand her more and she could understand me Mm. and I was able to kind of look at her and think wow you're coming in here every single day to work to uh, help educate the next generation to 
do something positive for uni students and and you're in your here giving me your time despite you struggling with something that in the end you're you're gonna die with it's kind of like I was able to resonate with that person more than I ever would if I didn't have the struggles that I was having because mm. I would never be able to see it through even half of that lens if that makes sense and yeah I think that was a huge turning point for me and 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 also obviously she said all the right things she said all the things that got me thinking you know she asked me the right questions obviously as we know coaches questions is a big part of coaching so she asked me all the right things to get me thinking and it just it just started to change my perspective obviously it was up to me to do the work but it just started to change my perspective and having her and her office to go to once a week even twice a week whatever just was a huge difference maker and she she opened the door to that you know I don't know if everyone in that setting depending on what their experience is at the time is open to 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 taking someone on that journey with them you know and I think mm. I was kind of incredibly like fortunate to, to have that you know I'm fully aware of that and that's it kind of adds to the motivation really it's like I had that opportunity I had that person going through that life experience to help me you know it's now about using that, you know, and you accessing the full potential of what I was given, not just for then, but for now, even, even for me with my business and coaching, you know, so yeah, hundred percent, mate. She, uh, she was great to have and, and knowing her before kind of gave me that base to, to approach her in, in a way without yeah. even realizing I was doing it. What an amazing person though, because y- y- you think like, and that kind of hits the the mindset thing on the head with with what she was doing for you because she could have easily been like oh, I've got I've got this disease it's really debilitating I'm just going to do what I want to do I'm not going to do it, give anything back for anyone else I could easily just stay at home and not have to work and do whatever and you know have have others help me and they they can kind of do that but instead of that it's a case of I'm going and working I'm doing this probably because it how it made her feel and then going and helping other people that are going through similar things you know in terms of like difficulties in their life mm-hmm. oh, that's amazing that is that's awesome. genuinely really amazing and and what an impact like I'm sure part of her reasoning around even doing that was you want to have an impact on people's lives and literally just with what you're saying that's absolute proof for her that she did have an impact you know like I, I often mention on the podcast about the ripple effect. Like I really, I really, really, really strongly believe in that because it, it you know, these li- these little actions and things you say and do for other people, it's the ripple effect of how that carries on around the world and helps other people. You know, because it's like she's done that with you. You're then going on helping your clients, and then they're all their interactions with other people are better. So literally, it's just spreading, spreading, spreading. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely yeah. love it. Absolutely love that. But how lucky that you've even had that person because had you not had that, it could have been completely different, you know? You also hit on a really good point about coaching where, you know, like I think a lot of the population, like coaching is basically, they they refer to it as life coach, don't they? Right, life coach is right. And that, and you often hear people like go, well, how do they know all the answers? Like how have they, you know, like they, they haven't got all their life in order. Like no one has their life fully in order, right? There's always room for progress. There's always room to learn. But I don't think people realize like how many different types of life, co- life coaching there is, like how diverse it is. And the main thing that people don't seem to realize about coaching is like coaches like us, we're not sat there to tell you like you need to do this, you need to do that. It's like literally it's like the complete opposite. Like we basically help guide you and ask you the right question at the right time that you find your way. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's that accountability, you know, it's, it's totally different to what most people have, which is a fit. Why I think when people do actually have their first coaching, it's life changing because it's just not at all what they're expecting. Um, and hence why when people have them light bulb moments, it, it is literally like the best job in the world, isn't it? When oh, yeah. they have that moment and they're just like, you can just see it's like flicks that inside them and they've realized like they are totally in control of their life, like how they live, everything they do, they're in control of. You know, and it's a bit like obviously NLP type stuff where people don't realize like we can control how 
we react to things you know it's just about a bit of a bit of practice and stuff and actually being in control of yourself rather than thinking like oh yeah i'm an angry person well you know you're not you're not some computer game character where you choose the stats and that's it you know you're like literally you can you can become <laughs> what you want to be you know um oh, i love that I, I, I love all these little moments in, in the podcast where, where you know, like it, just realizing that, that that point where you know that that's like a real important part where it started to, to change. Um, and most people have someone like that in their life, don't they? Someone who's got that little bit of wisdom that can just ask something at the right time. And it's taking that time to reflect, isn't it? Actually reflect on yourself and be like, okay, how can I be better? Like, what can I do differently to get past this? Oh, love it. Love it. Yeah. Just looking at some of the other bits I made here, some of the other notes, what was it? Uh, one of the other things you said about was, like, your mistakes. So realising about, you know, the importance of making mistakes. T tell us a bit about, about that, about what you've gained from making your mistakes. Yeah, I mean... I mean, one I remember, I, I talked a bit about having to speak to the police tonight. And obviously, I think taking all humour aside, I think when you have to do something like that, it probably means you have made a mistake somewhere down the line. So, yeah, I remember it was around Halloween time. And this is 2017 now, so it's a year later. And, and I was just causing some chaos, you know, in the nicest way possible. And I think just seeing other people's reactions the things that you're doing that's completely kind of unwarranted to them but from you it's coming from within inside it teaches you so much about the world and it taught me so much about the world because to answer your question it's you see that everyone is human and you just see that you're kind of here to make a positive influence not a negative one and, and at the time I was like right now I'm making a negative one all the time and that's what's kind of causing me hurt in a way, as well as other people, because I don't want to do that deep down. No one, I don't think anyone really wants to do that. Sometimes people maybe feel that they have to. And I certainly felt for my own reasons, my own struggles, like I had to. And it was, it was just that realization that you can be a positive influence, but it's just about wiring how you can do it with your circumstances. And that's obviously kind of what I've done now and what we all do as coaches now. And we we kind of rewire the struggles we've had and the things that and you made a great point earlier, Ross, like it, we're not here to give people answers and stuff and have our lives 100 percent bulletproof. But we can turn things for ourselves and for other people around that were once negatively impacting us, negatively impacting the people around us to be a positive force for ourselves and a positive force for other people and in this case our clients and that was what that gave me in a way was that realization that I'm using this to affect people negatively and myself negatively equally as importantly mm -hmm. but I could I could in theory with a bit of work with a bit of maybe just dampening down the ego a little bit I could turn this around and actually use it to be a positive force for the people around me just by seeing how other people reacted to the other side, the negative side. And then when you look at the other end of the spectrum, like you talked about those light bulb moments, the experiences the clients have, and you see how it can positively impact someone. Mm. It's just chalk and cheese. It's, it's just when you have that experience where you see both ends of the spectrum, you really do see the difference of what it can do for your life and just the world in general by choosing to make your experiences and your challenges a positive force for yourself and other people instead of a negative one. And that's, that's what it gave me to answer your question. Yeah. So it's basically, it's using the pain as a power instead. Mm. And actually, you know, like that, you, you have hit the nail on the head there with basically, you know, it, it would be so easy. I mean, and this doesn't apply to just like when you have an injury, right? This can be like any kind of pain in your life that, you know, something that's causing you distress. It's so easy to use that as an excuse for everything that's wrong in your life and for lowering your standards. Like it's so easy to go, oh, yeah, I, you know, you could easily have been like, oh, I've got this back injury and, you know, it flares up every now and then. 
so I'm, i don't need to go to the gym i, I can't i can't go to the gym you know i oh could you could you go and what dog i can't walk the dog because my you know my back hurts you know i can't do certain jobs because of this you can't you can't help your parents move out you can't you know like it would be like the best excuse for anything right but all that does is negatively impact others because all them people you know like for whatever it is in your life it, it's going to affect them people because they might have no one else to help them you know they it, it might affect other people who you know you would have had better relationships with them because you go to the gym together but now you're not so they go on their own so it's not as enjoyable for them so they don't actually get in as good a shape as they would have if you were putting in the effort to go with them and not everyone always looks at the kind of bigger impact of their actions but i think once you start putting in that little bit of effort in yourself through doing the reflection and going actually like what where where do i set the bar on myself am i using this as a, a negative thing to just you know put that onto everyone else or do i turn it into actually yeah i've got that but some people got far 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 worse problems how lucky am i that that is the only issue i have i can still do x one z i've still got my legs i've still got my arms i can still think for myself yeah um there's a, there's a real power in that, isn't there? In it, in actually cha- reframing it and changing how you how you look at things. Yeah, hundred percent. So well, so well put that. And I think it's potential, isn't it? You know, mm. it's it's what is your potential in the situation? And and like you said a moment ago, you realise how many things you do have. Okay, there's an area of your body that's that's hurting, it's in pain, and it's affect it's affected you mentally but you've got your legs you've got your arms you're walking you're breathing you're, you're able to talk to people and ultimately you're able to manage it you can't cure it okay fair enough that's away from the potential that's there's no potential to do that but there's potential to manage it and for me that's a that's a huge moment where you realize that it's basically life is about everything that's in your control and just mm-hmm. trying to exercise the potential of that and just realize how far you can take it you know okay you can't fly you can't do certain things but there's loads that you can do and you made Mm. a great point earlier i think Ross. you said i've tried everything well if you tried everything you would have you'd be in a much better place now and if you actually tried your best you'd make it because your best is pretty amazing you know you when you realize what your full potential actually is you realize just how capable you are and And yeah, it's just, it's gratitude, isn't it, as well? It's just realizing the things that you have and then using that to move to the things that you don't have right now, but you can gain. Yeah, and you hit on a bit of the limiting belief stuff, obviously, there. Like, many people, and and everyone has limiting beliefs in some way. Like, even we would still have them, even yeah. though we do our coaching stuff, because you still have them, but it's just, it's, I, I think of them as being a bit like a flex, right? Because you'll still have some form of limiting belief, but you just stretch it and push it further. Yeah. So you might think, oh, I, you know, say you were a runner. Oh, I can only run a hundred or oh, a little bit of a run. I can only run a hundred meters in 12 seconds. I'm not very fast. This and the other. And then you go, well, actually, I believe actually I could do, I could definitely cut a minute off that. No, a, a second, sorry. I could cut a second off that. I could cut a second off. And if you kept doing that and you were putting in the practice, well, you would probably end up doing it. And then actually, rather than that, you'd be like, well, actually, I, maybe I could be really good. Maybe I could do it in a 10. You know, like they, they, there's always them things in life where if you just push your boundaries a bit more, like, how far can I go? A perfect example is like running at the moment. So I'm training for a marathon at the moment. Now, before I started doing this, I would have never said I'm a runner, right? I would very rarely run. I just kind of run as and when I needed to, if I felt I was getting unfit. And I could have very easily of just said, all right, probably the best I can do is a 10 K because that's the furthest I've gone. Right. But I know that the more I push myself, the further and better I, I go. So I, I, at the start of the year, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm putting it as far as I've always wanted to go. So I'm booking a marathon, right? So I booked it in. So I'm committed. I have to do it. And then I've booked like, I've got like a, a half marathon in a few weeks and I've basically built that up from nothing really and don't get me wrong i'm not super quick or anything like that i'm not like runner of the year i'm not trying to <laughs> i'm definitely not gonna get any awards like that but i'm pushing the boundaries of what i believe i can do right and those who know me i have a uh, congenital heart disease so i could easily say i could easily say right i've got two small holes in my additional small holes in my heart there's no way i could ever do this there's no way i could do it 
but that's not me. I know I've, I've always said I will do a marathon one day and I know it will be mega hard. I know I really has, have to push myself, but I know if I set that goal and I put it, I've put in the steps, okay, my training plan that I know I will do it. I know how painful it will be. I know I could end up even walking to the end, but I know I will do it because I've set that I've set that absolute intention and put steps in place to make it happen. But there was a hundred percent of time, even, even while I've been, since I've booked up to this, where I start thinking, can I do it? You know, like I did a two hour run last weekend and I was like, that was hard, right? That was hard, really bad. But, and, and I know I'll be running for probably double that. But I know I will get there because it's just small steps and I've still got time to build on it. Right. So the point I want people to take from this is basically like really challenge and push yourself for how far you can go, because I guarantee well, however far you first tell me, you can probably do much, much further. And sometimes, yeah, don't set it the biggest goal in the world. You know, like I wouldn't suddenly say today, oh, yeah, I'm going to be president of the United States or something. Right. That would probably be a bit OTT. But if that was my big time dream, I'd be right. okay, well, first I need to do this. And first I need to do that. You can just set small steps in play that you do on the way to it. Yeah. Not so, but just in case anyone asks, that isn't what I I want to do. Right. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Good to get that one out there. (laughs) What what about yourself, Alex? Have you got any examples of that you can give them? Yeah, absolutely, mate. And like when I was having physical therapy, when I was, you know, recovering from the, the physical symptoms of what I was going through, it was, I, I didn't do walks and stuff. I didn't go on walks and that. Part of it was just different types of exercise, walking, building up to running. I, I couldn't really run very well at that point anyway. Mm. But just like you said, small steps. And I would walk further and further each time. You know, I think what there was a there was a point where I was going on about three walks a day around the city I was in just because I enjoyed doing it and because I knew what it was doing for me. And that all came from pushing myself a little bit further each time and a a message i'd I'd love to give people as well is when you do push yourself it's like you talked about it being hard it is i'm not gonna lie to you it is difficult and it was difficult for me at that time because i was in pain and it was it was hard to just go that extra extra few yards but when you do push yourself to the to what you can and and okay you thought that's how far you could go before you said about 10k that's how far you could go go a little bit further the way you feel about yourself when you do something like that is is life-changing on its own when you realize you've pushed the boundaries of what you thought you were capable of it like in our cases it just gives you that belief it gives you you just then kind of know that you can do it and you know next time it's about going a little bit further again and that's what the realization i had from that experience just by pushing myself each day and then I got up to running, I got back in the gym and that all started from someone who was lying in bed from, I don't know, and sometimes it was 7 p.m. in the evening, you know, mm. to get him back in the gym, get back playing football again and stuff and enjoy myself. And yeah, that, okay, that's a, that's a big gap, but it was, like you said, the small goals that got me there in the first place. I didn't, did I believe when I started that I'd be kind of back to doing the things I was doing before? No, because that's not the way my mindset was. But just by pushing myself and just by, yeah, practicing in a way and just taking mm. each step at a time, literally in this sense, yeah, I started to believe and started to feel good about myself, which is something I hadn't felt in a long time. And yeah, before you know it, you're you're doing things that you never thought were possible, and that's a great moment for anyone because that's a moment that everyone can kind of hold on to is that I did more than I thought I was capable of. And that made me feel good about myself. So yeah, I totally resonate with what you're, what you're saying there, Ross. Yeah. And and it's another point that was just coming to mind to me, actually, when you were talking about that is often when, when people do have like a a dream as some people may call it, but a dream is a dream turns into a goal since you put a step towards it. Right. And often people are so much closer to an achieving it than they realize and it always feels quite far away right and then that's when people start quitting so you know they start doing steps like you know this time of year we're coming towards the end of january it's a classic example where people would have set these intentions at the start of the year new year's resolutions i'm going to do x y and z i'm going to eat better or whatever and by now 
a lot of people would have dropped off and they're no longer doing it. And often a reason for that is, well, they, I mean, there's a, a load of reasons normally, but basically it's because one, it becomes hard, right? And it isn't, you haven't given it enough time to instill it as a habit, right? So all you've had initially is motivation. And if motivation is absolute short term, isn't it? It's mm -hmm. like, that is, you know, it get you through a week or two, but it ain't going to keep going. Yeah, as soon as the going gets tough and people expect things to happen quicker than they actually will. And, it, and there's a good old say, I say it's a saying, but it's, it's kind of, it's a fact really. But basically you, you over, you'll over think what you can achieve in a year. So you'll think like, oh, by the end of the year, I want this. And it's probably not actually achievable, but the amount you can achieve in say three or five years, people massively underestimate. And five years is a long long time you could absolutely entirely change your life within five years without a shadow of a doubt and actually you can do it a lot simpler but most of the time people often think it, it, a big goal is that it's always a year oh yeah i want this by a year's time and then they don't achieve that and then they think they're rubbish and that they can't do it because of x y and z but it's actually just a case of yeah you you might not have necessarily got to that last bit you know you might have wanted this massive million pound house right and you might not actually have that but actually now you might be living in a far better neighborhood you know you might have a half a million pound house that you didn't have before and people often forget to celebrate the wins don't they like actually yeah. how far have you come and actually now yeah you might not have got to that end goal yet but just carry on doing them little steps and you normally get there before you realize yeah exactly man exactly and, and just sometimes by having a bigger goal just by setting the sky's limit and having a big goal you at the start you think to yourself wow i could never get to that you mm. know that's what a lot of entrepreneurs have isn't it actually the belief of even having a successful business is alien to mm. people at the start and it was to me as well so just by having that bigger goal there's so much room in between where you are now and that big goal for you to achieve so many great things and like you said, it just takes that moment sometimes to realize by having this goal, look at everything that's happened in between for me. Look at mm. everything I've done, not just on a in terms of success, but just like how you've grown as a person and who you've become because of this. You know, and that that's all what happens in between, isn't it? And I think, and and then and also you've got more to go. <laughs> like you like you said, there's just because you haven't achieved it yet means that there's still part of this journey to experience and see and that's exciting so yeah i totally take your point on that just definitely never be afraid to set big goals because okay you know, i'm not saying you're going to achieve it straight away in fact you almost definitely won't but that means there's so much that you can accomplish in between by taking each step and yeah it's when you think of it like that because you could easily look at it as if you know, oh, it's a massive goal. I can't do this. Like you said earlier, it's just not going to happen. It's too big. Or you could look at it as like, I've not just got that big goal at the end that I could potentially achieve. I've got so much between now and then to get excited about and to to enjoy and, and get on the journey for. So, yeah, I totally take your point on that. But one of the interesting things with big goals as well is like, often they're, they're almost like taboo like people don't want to tell people because they worry that people will laugh at them mm. uh, you know about how big the goal yeah. is but whatever your goal is there's real real power in the accountability like as soon as you tell someone else you're going to do it there's a power in that because it's a kind you, you know we love to prove ourselves right as humans don't we we lo absolutely love to prove ourselves right and that can be massively to your detriment but when you're setting that goal of what you want to do, if you're telling people, yeah, I'm going to do this within X amount of time, well, you're making yourself accountable. So you're more likely to take the action to make that happen because you want to prove them right. Yeah. yeah. Or prove them wrong. If you're thinking they think that you won't do it, well, you want to prove them wrong. Yeah. And prove yourself right. So that's a definitely a tip I give people is, is tell people, you know, tell people about it. So I know people before, if they, they've done things and then it's not until they've actually done it and they're like, oh yeah, that was a big goal of mine. Well, you didn't tell anyone. Like, <laughs> or they don't achieve it and then they're kicking their self going, oh, I, I always wanted to do that, but never. So why didn't you tell people to get that extra little kick, you know, a bit of accountability. Yeah. Like I would have been on your case. I'd be like, get on it, <laughs> mate. You know what you're doing? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, 
there's an, there another point in, in in what you were saying because obviously we were talking a little bit about limiting beliefs and it's a bit like so so for example if you had a goldfish here and you put it in a tiny little bowl it only grows a small amount doesn't it and it's because it, it has to stay within the confines of what it what it is whereas when you put them in a bigger tank they end up becoming these big goggly things don't they and it you know it's the same with like plants and bushes and that if you put them in a tiny space and they haven't got much room to grow they don't grow that much and it's exactly the same with your limiting beliefs because once you identify what they are if you're setting all this i can only do this and i can't achieve much you won't because you're telling yourself you can't do that and you're putting these you know, barriers in place that we get in there right whereas when you're setting these bigger goals you've got the room to actually grow you've got that room to do that and the other thing i just want to say on this guys is is like mistakes like I used to be petrified to make mistakes. I hated being being wrong and I'd be really hard on myself. But when you do put a bit of work on yourself and you get a coach and stuff and you actually change the way you look at things, like I don't care about making mistakes now because I actually still see it as a step forward because actually I know another way that doesn't work. So I'm closer to getting to the way that does work. Yeah, that's powerful. Man. It's a really important point you make as well. I always like to say to to anyone and to myself don't avoid failure don't try to avoid failure just try to avoid the fear of failure because mm. it's not failure that's going to stop you the failure is going to give you those lessons it's going to move you to the next level every time because you know not what like what not to do and you kind of know now what to do because of maybe a mistake you've made or something that's not gone to plan and that naturally moves you to the next level but the fear of failure is what stops you from taking any action altogether and mm. moving away from those limitations that you have. So, yeah, that's a really important point you make, I think, just not to avoid failure in itself because it's inevitable. And it also is in a way, believe it or not, not, not a lot of people want to hear it, but it's a good thing. Mm. Instead, try and work on avoiding the fear of it because that's the thing that stops you. Do you know what I think is one of the most like poisonous words ever created? And that's perfection, right? Yeah. Because... I used to be, and I didn't, and it weren't until I started working on stuff that I realized I was like this, but I used to be a horrendous perfectionist in anything I did. I'd, I'd spend way, way, way too long on it because it wasn't exactly how I wanted. And the truth of it was, is because I'd never really done that visualization, I never really knew what I wanted. Like, unless someone, like someone else could have made it, like say I had to design some that. I could design design and I'd never be happy with it. I could give it to you. You could design something completely different. And I decide that is, that's perfect. That's the best. But whatever I made, it was never quite, never quite there where, where I wanted. And it wasn't until I started doing the the kind of coaching, coaching qualifications that I realized like that holds me back so much because actually for me, 80% is, is a hundred percent done for 99% of people. So when you're always striving to get to that hundred, it's never, it doesn't actually really exist, you know? Um, and I realized like, I, I actually had this perfectionist kind of thing in like most areas of my life. And I was just, you know, I'd always be, and it's good to strive for more, don't get me wrong, but it was like, it would just never be quite enough. You know, it would always be like, oh, it could have been better if it did this. And a classic example of this, right, is I used to be in a band. So we used to, used to do live shows and stuff like that. We got like a little record contract and stuff like that with a little indie london rate label and stuff but and basically like once i look back i remember like if i had anyone i knew that come to the, come to a show right and like i'd come off stage and they'd come and talk to me like they'd be you know they'd always be like oh, i was really good man loved it you know like this and i would always the first thing i'd be saying about is i'd be focusing on like something i did wrong or i didn't play that well or a mistake I made and I'd be like oh what about in this bit where I didn't do that and like literally nearly every time they were like didn't even notice I didn't yeah. even notice yeah. and at the time I'd let I'd let that like sap and ruin the whole experience for me right whereas like how privileged am I I've got to get on stage sing these people they've all had a great time you know quite often you have a load of mates there if it was like you know local one and stuff and it's like I got to make all these real special memories of people but I was never present enough in it to be like, how how lucky am I that I've done that? Because I'd just be so focused on the one thing I did wrong, you yeah. know? And I look back now and I'm like, it's absolutely crazy. It, it's absolutely crazy. Yet I learned from doing that because obviously I'd make the mistakes. Actually, I would be better the next time. 
but then these things I did something that I you know I didn't feel I did enough or I didn't feel I was that good in that show because I'm comparing it to other shows or other people or whatever then I just focus on that you know and, and I look at now and I'm like oh my god like what a waste <laughs> what a waste <laughs> like I could have I enjoyed it even more yeah but yeah, I was just, I just I had to share that story then because it just came into my mind and I was like, oh dear, oh dear. <laughs> I get I, I totally get it, mate. It was the same for me when I would play football as well. It'd always be that one misplaced pass I made or something like that. I could have made about a hundred passes and they would all gone to the player every time. But then the one that I just got wrong will be the one that I'll think about and maybe even lose sleep over. Who knows? But like just I can totally understand where you're coming from with that. And I think that's a big part of life, isn't it? It's just recognizing what you do great, what you do well. And it's so hard to do that because we naturally kind of just focus on the negative things so much all the time. Mm. And I think it's just really important, even if it's to have someone else to remind you sometimes, because it's good to have that, like being honest, but also just to practice ourselves telling ourselves reminding ourselves that actually you know what the reason why i'm trying to be perfect is because i'm good at this mm. and i know i'm good at it and I, and I take pride in it and it's and that's why i have got this perfectionist thing even though deep down i know it doesn't exist and there's no such thing as perfect that's why and and yeah i think definitely more of that in the world just reminding ourselves what we're good at and what we did well because there's mm. plenty, there's always plenty for what we did well, rather than the one percent of things, <laughs> the ninety nine percent instead of the one percent, yeah, <laughs> the one percent of things that we didn't get right. That is one of the amazing things about coaching. Actually, you just it kind of you just reminded me of just then is like like when you talk to friends and stuff, right, or friends or family, whoever, like people don't often open up in the same way you would when you're with a coach, right? Because there's yeah. always like for example, like if you went and spoke, if your mum was like your confidant, right, there were certain things you will not tell her because you won't want to worry her. Yeah. So you might be feeling like really depressed and stuff. And you might think like, I ain't going to, I ain't going to tell her how I'm feeling because I don't want to worry her. Or, you know, it could be something like, I, I don't want to tell her about that job I really want to do because she'll worry and think it's dangerous for me. And, you know, there's always these little things in life that actually you wouldn't necessarily tell them. And that's one of the really, really unique things about a coaching relationship. And that's something I literally always say to people as well on my first like, session is about it has to be an absolute, total, open, honest conversation where you can literally say anything, mm. like whatever you want to say, say it. Because often that is where the growth comes, isn't it? It's like, yeah, it's that really magical relationship. And, you know, like, I think... Most people, if they've never if they've never tried coaching, they wouldn't know. But you know, I can't invoke enough on people like how empowering it is to do it, to have that conversation with someone, and you will feel like amazing because it is it's such a unique conversation, isn't it? Yeah, mate, it's amazing, and and you'll always remember, and I certainly do. You'll always remember that time in your life where you experienced it and how maybe not all of the changes it made, but most of them, you know, you, you're going to, you're always going to look back on there and thought, wow, I had a real shift there. That's mm -hmm. when things changed for me, like not just in terms of my life, but just how I could see the world, just how I could see things around me. I'll always remember that time as a massive shift, you know, yeah. and obviously the more you do it, the more of those shifts you have. So yeah, I totally agree with you. Like I think that just, just experience it just just do it and just like you said find someone you would be fully open with and fully exercise that potential because yeah it's it is life-changing that's just a fact and yeah I, i'm just kind of like remembering when i started now like just just talking about it like when i got into coaching and i i did i started i did the, i did an accreditation and learning all about it and it was it was very much like that for me it was like wow there's so much more to this life than i ever thought there was and that's the kind of realization you get love that see love that alex tell us what type of people you work with now so if people listen to this and they think oh you know they resonate with you what what type of people do you work with we, we often refer to it in the kind of business industry as like an ideal client avatar that won't mean much to you guys 
as listeners, but basically it's the type of person that would fit with the type of work we do. Yeah. So it's online entrepreneurs who are just take, looking to take their lives to the next level. As for me, obviously my journey was a life of struggle to, to now having an online business where I do something that I love and that I'm good at and that I just can't get enough of. So it's for people who kind of want to create that same level of freedom, that same level of potential for themselves. Um, and it's helping them with mindset, which was the exact thing that I needed to improve in order to make things happen in my life. So yeah, people in the online space, people who are maybe new or aspiring to it, but also, you know, just it, where they could do with a mindset shift to actually get things moving for themselves and get them moving in the direction towards the type of life that they want to live. Those are the people that I work with on a day-to-day -day basis and that, yeah, that I'm really passionate about because I've been on that journey right from <laughs> adversity through to, to actually doing it. And yeah, I know it's pretty, pretty damn amazing when you go on it. So these are the people that I love working with. And I, and I, and I, knew, I kind of always knew it, I suppose. I, I started off in the beginning, just like you said, when you just joined, you're looking for your niche, you're looking for the type of coaching. And yeah, once I found this, and once I started actually coaching clients in this field, you've talked about that client avatar, I just knew straight away, this was the fit. This was where it worked. And, and yeah, that's what I do now. And to be honest, Ross can't get enough of it. Just absolutely <laughs> loving. I've got I've got a client later, and I'm I'm just excited to see their their progress from the last week. So, yeah, that's that's what I'm doing now. And where where can people find you, Alex? So I've got a website, alexjwatts.com. But feel free to check out my Instagram, alexjwatts underscore, and then just Alex Watts on Facebook as well. You'll find all the links to my coaching pages, free resources and everything, and my website in general through that. And you can see my content too. And you can connect with me, of course. Feel free to send me a DM anytime. And yeah, looking forward to connecting with you. And yeah, just, just everywhere, really, to be honest. <laughs> like, whatever people feel is best. I know a lot of people don't necessarily look at websites but definitely check it out because there's plenty of stuff on there for you to for you to take on board and and yeah like i said feel free to reach out perfect and alex i always like to end the show with a, a nice little last thoughts to give people a last little insight what, what would you like to leave people with yeah i think the one thing i would love to leave people with is that just because you're not where you you may not be where you want to be right now but that isn't and doesn't necessarily have to be a bad thing it just the, the reason you have a goal is because you don't have it yet you know and you are where you are and that's okay it's okay to be where you are it's okay to maybe not have the success that you want to have right now don't let that be a reason to stop you from trying to achieve it and from trying to move in the direction that you want to go in. Just allow yourself to be where you are and look back, like we said earlier, on the things that you've already achieved because I guarantee you there are many things. And yeah, just see it as a blessing you are where you are because that's what it is. And just, yeah, just enjoy it. Be excited about what's to come. Be excited about moving towards those goals that you have. You know, that's the message I'd love to leave people with today. Thank you, Alex. Well, there you go. That's your final final insight for the day from Alex there. Alex, thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate you taking the time to come out and speak and tell your story on here. No problem, Ross. Thanks for having me on, mate. Thank you. So that's all for this week, everyone. Please remember to follow this podcast, share it with your friends and listen every week. I really appreciate everyone who's taken the time to listen. And definitely if you're listening to this and you know someone else that will benefit from it, please do share it for them. The more people it gets out to, the more people it can help. Thank you for listening. And remember, I believe in every single one of you you've got this. Thank you for joining us today on this episode of the Bounce Back to Breakthrough podcast and for allowing us on this journey of life with you. 
If you found today's episode helpful, make sure to subscribe to our podcast so you never miss an inspiring story. And don't forget to visit our website at www.rossrolf.com. Until next time, remember, no matter where you are on your own journey, there's always the potential for a breakthrough. I believe in you. You've got this.